Good morning. John Gilkison here, and it's Friday, uh, May 8th, 2020. And this week I got into uh, a little bit of a controversy about uh, overpopulation uh, or population overshoot denial, which uh, I ran into on this program just have a think. And originally he, he was just doing a rebuttal of the Michael Moore film, uh, Planet of Humans. And I really liked the show. He, he went through the, the whole point. I'm sorry I keep saying he, but I, I can't figure out the, the name of this fellow here that does this show. I can't, I can't find it. And, uh, so I'm just going to have to refer to him as he, uh, but he, he went through a point-by-point point rebuttal of the uh, information, so-called information that was contained in this uh, documentary, Planet of Humans. And he did a really good job of uh, disassembling it all. Yeah. But when he got to the about the 22-minute mark in the show, uh, he ventured off the, the road, kind of making the left or right turn, into overpopulation, which he basically denied was a problem. Um, and it's a usual mixed bag of talking points I've been hearing for decades. And um, so I posted a comment and a day or so later, he got back to me and referenced a video he had shot uh, last year on overpopulation. Uh, it was titled something like uh, there's going to be 11 billion humans on the planet by 2100. Can we sustain that? And so I went and watched the video. It took me a day or two before I finally did because uh, I was curious what he had to say and it was it was usual. It was uh, an expanded version of the comments he made on this show and comments he made to me in his answer to me. And these comments aren't really answers. Um, what I've been noticing over the decades is that uh, you can have people who are very knowledgeable about climate change. They're not climate change deniers or anything. Uh, they're very information based. But when it comes to world overpopulation, they um, are in denial about it. And I think there's several, um, several reasons for this. Uh, number one is, of course, as you know, the Catholic Church is against uh, birth control. And in the United States, for example, there's a, a really large fanatical anti-abortion uh, movement. And also, paradoxically, they're against birth control also, it seems like. <laughs> so they, they, they don't want the solution to abortion. They, they just want to control people. Uh, but anyway, the, the talking points go something like this. Um, too many people in the industrial world, Europe and America, so forth, uh, uh, consume too much meat. And it takes a lot more land to grow uh, beef. So if we all just switch to a more vegan diet, they're not even claiming we all have to go 100% vegan, for example, that we could grow plenty of enough food for people. But it kind of begs the question. If, if we're in population overshoot already, and the biosphere is collapsing around us as we speak, uh, why is it desirable for us to go ahead and pull out all the stops and try to meet the needs for the 11 billion people that they say are coming? And they had a beautiful demonstration of this. They had all these boxes and they started stacking them up and you'd take the box off the top, which represented the people in the 70 to 90 year old category, and they would die off, and, but there would be two more boxes come underneath it. So even though the worldwide birth rate is low, I think it's 2.5 per 
persons on average per child, per uh, couple, pardon me, that the population is just going to continue to expand. But my question is, all right, so we do all this and we, we feed 11 billion people. Okay. Then what? What are we going to do when it reaches 15 billion people? And uh, no one ever raises this question because if we're not going to address the underlying issue that the population just keeps expanding and expanding because we're not actively trying to control the population, um, then what? So I, I used to have a pretty crude analogy on this. Um, the, um, um, I, I was saying, well, we could be in capitalist heaven if um, the, uh, we all started eating vegan, it would be possible to grow the world population to 15 billion because we, we could have twice the land. This is a crude analogy, but anyway. And I said, but that's, that's not good enough. I says, uh, what are we going to do then? And I said, well, we could, uh, we could just start feeding everyone by growing algae and using algae growing products and this would be more efficient than just land use and and so forth if we did it right and so then we could double the population again we could have 30 billion people but this is not enough for our growing economies because once we reach 30 billion and we're stalling out because we can't feed more people what are we going to do then we have to have more consumers. Um, we have to we have to keep growing the economy, and uh, um, then I said, "Well, we could genetically engineer everyone to only be three feet tall, because the three foot tall person consumes less food." Uh, and then, so if we're all eating algae, we could probably have up to 60 billion people. Who knows? And not only that, they would all have smaller cars and smaller houses and so forth. So you get the picture. We could reduce consumables. So there you go. And, uh, and, and I did this crude analogy just to show you how ludicrous this whole idea is. Now... I look at it as it's it's just like the Copernican Revolution. At one time, people thought that the sun revolved around the earth and the earth was the center of the universe. And there's still people that can't disabuse themselves of that notion. They won't they won't say it, but uh, they they still think that humans are the apple of God's eye and and. Uh, we are the center of the universe as far as Jesus is concerned, I guess. I don't know. But we're in a new age now where what I call humanocentrism, where people may understand that the sun is in the center of the solar system and the planets revolve around it, and we're just off in some wing of the galaxy. We're not in the center of anything. They understand all that intellectually, but humans still are the center of creation, and we're the most important thing on the planet. So this idea of addressing our overpopulation is just anathema to them, and they just can't accept it. Besides that, it smacks of eugenics, population control, totalitarianism, and stuff like this. But uh, so they, they want to find other answers like everybody going vegan. And so although this program, just have a think, I like it. He's got a lot of good information. But in his, his program on, um, on 11 billion humans, and he had a lot of great information, but it all led nowhere. It, it led to one grand conclusion that was a fallacy, even though he had all the facts like. We just can't get there from here. It's a spiraling impossibility. If we're collapsing the biosphere already, what's 11 billion people going to do? My answer is, is 
is, is don't grow the extra food. Don't don't feed them and they won't come. The, it's it's like the baseball movie, you know, where they build a stadium out in a cornfield somewhere. And so they build it and they will come. Well, don't build it and they won't come. We have got to stop trying to meet the need, needs of a future growing population. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for this. I mean, capitalism is part of it, but it goes way back to to banking in the uh, 1500s. It's uh, it's called fractional reserve banking, where where if you have you know uh, one dollar deposits in your bank, you can loan out nine dollars, and uh, the way this works is you get interest back. <laughs> so, <laughs> and for that to work, it's a Ponzi scheme ultimately. So the population has to keep growing and you have to keep mining more resources. So banking's one of the things that underpins all this. And uh, so, but if you look at a green history of the world, we've exploited every niche everywhere on the planet throughout our history. We've hunted almost everything to extinction. We basically fished out the oceans already. And the oceans are dying. And there's hardly any land or, or the very much biosphere left for anything else but us, other than bacteria, I think, which outweigh us and viruses and stuff like that. But uh, it's just not a healthy biosphere at all. It's collapsing around us. Right now we're going through an insect apocalypse. Uh, where does people think all this is gonna go? Uh, we're overpopulated by a factor of at least seven or eight. And I say this because the last time humans on this planet existed and lived solely on sunshine, was probably the year 1800. Now, I'll grant you, the technology was primitive and we mostly lived on slave power. And by slaves, I don't just mean people who were owned. Uh, the average person was a slave also back then, literally. Uh, you could argue pretty much the average person still is. They just raised the, all they did, they didn't get rid of slavery, they just raised the minimum wage. Um, but, um, so we not only need to stop population growth, but we really need to see a dieback of the human race back to one billion people. And if let's say we, we could reduce carbon emissions by 90%. And if there was only, uh, we could reduce the population of the planet by 90%. Well, well there you are, you're down to around one hundredth the emissions. Now the qu real question is, is, what are the sinks? Could nature absorb, uh, uh, let's say, carbon emissions that were one hundredth of what they are now and process them? I don't have the answer to that question, and I don't know anyone who does. But I'm, sh I'm sure there are people out there who have looked into this, but it needs to be answered. And so... Do I have any draconian ideas about how to uh, cut back the population? No, except to say that birth control and abortion ought to be free to every woman on the planet without question. And we need to assist everyone. And abortion is only a backstop. Birth control is the answer, obviously. But um we we just not uh we just don't have our thinking caps on this at all uh and i don't have any problems with people going more vegan if they want to do that and but also there's a case for growing meat because some land isn't usable for for growing crops so efficient land use would include some meat products so anyway i'm getting to the 15 minute mark and I just wanted to address what I address what I call this groupthink about overpopulation. And it seems to be there is a, a great deal of population, overpopulation denialism out there. So I'm going to let you go here. I'm going to stop it.
So we'll see you all down the road, everyone. Bye-bye.